the mic. <laughs> well, uh, I'm gonna. I've been wanting to do this message again. I did this message quite some time ago. I don't know, maybe a year or so ago. Um, and it's you know God talks about parables and in illustrations and things like that. And I uh, there's one thing that we all have in common that a lot of us don't think about. Every, every one of us in this room have some sort of disability that we call disability. But I want you to understand something that it took me years to understand, and that is God does not create mistakes. Some people are born with disabilities, and some people get disabilities later in life. But what I want to illustrate to you today is that I'm going to use, I'm going to use my disability as a witness for God. And that is that I'm going to show you how I relate my relationship and my guide dog with God. Number one, I'm going to take and put his cloak of righteousness on him right now. As you see, I'm going to, this is his harness, his guiding harness. And I'm going to call it the cloak of righteousness. And now he has this on. He knows that he is my servant. He knows that his responsibility is me. And that he knows now when he has this on, he's all business. Now, if somebody else comes and uses him, takes his leash, and I hand his leash over to them, and I'm using somebody else, or I'm working out around him, it's not his responsibility to come to me and protect me at that time because I've walked away from him. I let go and I walked away from him. This is the analogy, the analogy of my relationship with God. So he's sitting here, or he's standing here at attention. I can pick this harness handle up and when I pick this harness handle up, here. He knows that he's ready to work. He knows I'm willing to go wherever he leads me, wherever I tell him to lead me. And when I tell him to go forward, Tangier, forward, he's gonna he'll walk start. forward. And let's say there's a step here or, or a curb, he will stop at that curb. And I will have my hand, my hand on his handle as we come up to that curb, and I'll find that curb with my foot. Then I know that curb is there. And then I praise him. Have you ever praised God for showing you something that's dangerous and kept you away from it? I found that curb. And there's a manhole that I cannot see that is open, a drain. A great big drain hole to let the sewer water and the street water run down. And I will tell him, I'll say, okay, Tangier, forward. He's getting confused. And I'll tell him to go forward. Thank you. And he won't and he won't go forward. And I'll wonder why. And so I will try to correct him. And he stays there. Because he's protecting me. I, I can't see yet why he's protecting me. So what do I do? I bring my right foot up to the curb, take my other foot, step down with my foot gently, and find what's going on here. Is it an extra tall curb, or is there a manhole open there, or something there that's dangerous? Ah, someone left the manhole off. There's a hole there. Or there's something dangerous there. Or maybe I'll take my arm out and go like this, and I'll find a rope or a sawhorse 
there because they're doing construction work. So what do I do? I praise him. I praise him. That a boy, good boy, Chancher. Oh my, that's a wonderful dog. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. You saved me once again from danger. I get to the end of a block. And I'll say, Tangier, left. He will immediately take me to the left <coughs> and guide me straight down the sidewalk. And he'll take me in and out of, of people, planters, wagons, skateboards, garbage cans. And I won't even know they're there. He's taking me all the way down there and uh, man, that was a smooth ride. He didn't run me into anything. But let's say perhaps, perhaps I tell him to go right and we're moving down the sidewalk to right. And all of a sudden, I bang into something. I hit something. I hit this, let's say. And I go, See this? I ran into this. So we'll back up and we'll do it again. I don't overcorrect him the first time. I show it to him and I'm being patient because it hurt. It hurt me. And I say, look at this. See this? I'll back up three or four steps. And I'll think and pause and tell him to sit. And I'll say, okay, now we're going to go. We're going to try this again. We'll walk by it, completely miss it. Perhaps I may have not have been paying attention to him because he speaks to me, the Holy Spirit, God, my guide dog speaks to me through his harness handle. When I have a hold of his harness handle, come on, Tanja. I'll have a hold of this harness handle. And let's say he's going to go either left or right, or he's going to take me out around something. I'll feel it through this harness handle. Let's say he's going to go up some stairs. His harness handle, will, this part will tilt down, and this front part will go rise up a little bit. And I'll feel that in, through his harness handle. I have to be alert and paying attention to him all the time. Even if my wife is walking beside me, or in front of me, or behind me, or my best buddy's walking with me, I have to be able to carry on a conversation and pay attention to my dog. Did you ever realize that when you spell dog backwards, it spells God? G-O-D. See? And so I have to pay attention to him because he's serving me and wanting to protect me through my life. He has given me a freedom, a liberty that I can move and travel throughout this land and throughout this world. I have been able to get on airplanes, fly from Seattle back to the East Coast and back. I've flown to California several times in different places by myself with just me and my dog. And, and we've gone through airports have you ever been downtown Seattle during a Christmas rush? And you hit a crowd of people. And they're just insane. Now, if I took a cane, a white cane that blind people use, that cane doesn't have brains. It doesn't have common sense. That cane has no discipline in its life. 
where my dog has discipline. I trained my dog to keep him trained. I didn't train him to do his guide work. That was done out of school. They taught him and trained him. But I have to do the upkeep. And that's just like our relationship with God. We have to do the upkeep. Are we doing the upkeep in our lives? Are we reading our manual to know how to run our lives? Are we ignoring our manual so that our dog becomes disorderly and becomes disobedient? We don't run him through his obedience. How often do we do that to our kids? It's no wonder our children are confused today. Because we don't use our manual. We don't use the Word of God. We don't keep them in training. And that's our relationship with God. If I don't keep myself in training and know how to listen to my dog speak to me through his harness handle and through what direction I, he's pulling me so I can feel him pulling, maybe he's trying to back up. And, and, and I'm wondering, what are you doing? You're, 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 you're fidgeting. What's going on here? How come you're, you're, you're going the wrong direction? You're backing up. And I'll get mad at him and angry. What are you, you idiot? He's backing up because there's a car coming out of the driveway and you're not even paying attention and you're going to get ran over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because I didn't pay attention. I didn't continue in my training and in focusing on my dog. Do we quit focusing on God? in our daily life. See how that relates? It's a wonder. I told a friend of mine, I says, I always have four on the floor because I, I think of my dog as a Mara, uh, Maserati or something like that or Porsche. And I got four on the floor. And I tell you, I've, I've used golden retrievers, <laughs> yellow labs, German shepherds, black lab and this particular dog is retired and he's a yellow lab golden retriever and many of my friends and people have asked me which is your best which was your best dog and you know what, what I always say that one this one and that's what we should think of God who's our best God who's our best Savior it's the only God that we have at that time. And that's Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. He's the best God. He saved my life time after time after time again. Because he has given me the liberty of freedom and choice. I could choose to pay attention to my guide dog or I can choose to ignore him. I could choose to keep him in training and keep myself in training, to keep my relationship with him. And that's what I've talked about many times. How is your relationship with your God, with your Savior? And I tell you what, my relationship with my Lord and Savior, I try to keep right on top of it. And there's many times when I have to say, forgive me, Tangier. Forgive me, God. I didn't pay attention. There's nothing wrong with being ashamed to say, forgive me. God takes the shame out of being ashamed when you say, forgive me. Because I've overcorrected my dog many a time. It was my fault. He was right, and I was wrong. How often does that happen with you in your relationship with God, with Jesus Christ? That happens to me all the time. But you know what? This dog is just like God in another way. I could overcorrect him. And I could get really mad at him. See, I got my first guide dog when I was 16 years old. And I'm sorry to say that my temper has been short in my life. 
I've had a rage problem. And I've overcorrected and really gotten mad and yelled and screamed. And, and I actually hit a dog. And I had to stop and know to ask that dog to forgive me. But you know what? That dog would come and save my life three minutes later or even sooner than that because that dog has more of a forgiving heart than what I had at that time. Is our hearts forgiving? Are we willing to forgive one another? Are we willing to even forgive ourselves when we thought God did something wrong? When it wasn't the dog, when it wasn't God that did it, it was us that didn't pay attention. We did not pay attention. And that goes back to knowing his word. That's what goes back to using the manual, the basic information before leaving earth, which is the Bible. B-I-B-L-E, basic information before leaving earth manual. See how that works, how that all comes together. And that's why a dog is man's best friend, as far as I'm concerned. That's why I wanted to share with you, and I hope you get something out of that. And I hope that that's something that you can think on and that you can realize your relationship with God. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you for your blessed assurance to know that you are mine. Lord, I thank you for the freedom and the liberty that you give us. God, I thank you that we know in our hearts that you do not make mistakes, that we are where we are at this point in time because you have a reason. In regards of what our affliction is, it is not a mistake. It's to be used to glorify you. If we could see beyond our selfishness and see beyond our disobedience and that we can see you in those times, how much easier our lives would be. Lord, I know since I've been using dogs for so many years, the relationship that I have with you and you have shown me these things, my relationship with you has grown and that I know our relationship can grow with you as we realize these few things are common in everybody's life. Irregardless of what they are or who they are or where they're at, the same basic principles are there. Lord, I ask you to bless each and every person here. Amen. Thank Amen. you. Amen.